Hi, this is another video in the series of basic Windows domain server management. In this video we're going to move DHCP, which is I think dynamic host control protocol, from being on the router over to the Windows domain server that we've configured. DHCP is used on a network to give out IP addresses or IPv4 addresses to client computers and any other things which join the network. So wireless net, uh, wireless clients, phones, CCTV, cameras if you've got network based ones, pretty much anything that joins the network will by default broadcast for a DHCP allocation. The DHCP server will pick an IP address from its table that's free and then give it to the client. You generally don't want the router to continue to run DHCP if you have a Windows domain server on the network. The Windows domain DHCP will perform the same task. It has the ability, and I'd recommend to switch it on, to prevent collisions. So if somebody has accidentally configured a static IP address, the server will check first. And the other thing it will do is it will automatically create a DNS entry in the Active Directory's DNS system when a DHCP address is handed out which is very useful for just general management of the network and keeping things um, synchronized. So let's start or we'll go to move that over. I want to go to the domain controller and log in. So I'm now logged on to the domain controller. I'm also going to log on to my router. And go over to DHCP for the router. And we can see here DHCP is enabled, is on, and is giving out IP addresses in the range 192.168.0.100 through to 192.168.0.200 with a default gateway IP address of .1, which is the router itself, and at the moment a DNS address of .1, which is the router itself. So let's flip over to the server and bring up control panel, administrative tools, and within here we'll have DHCP. And the little red icon here means that it's not enabled or possibly not authorized to give out IPv4 addresses. You don't want two DHCP servers on your network, so if you are going to enable DHCP on your Windows server, you need to make sure that you have disabled it on your router. Otherwise, you'll find that depending on which DHCP server responds first, uh, will give split assignments to different clients. So one computer will get given old DHCP or old IP address allocations from the router, and some will be given ones from the Active Directory server. So the first thing I'd recommend doing is turning on collision detection. There are so many small networks where nobody really knows what's been statically configured for an IP address and what hasn't, uh, or what is generally bad at doing DHCP and is taking an IP address that it shouldn't. So on the IPv4 section of your server's DHCP, right click on it, go to Properties, and go to the Advanced tab. And what I would do is where it says conflict detection attempts, I would make sure that that is on one. I've never needed to set it higher than one, and the higher you set this number, the longer it will take before a client is given an IP address, because Windows will try multiple times to see whether that address is in use. So I'd switch that on. It does delay the client getting an IP address, but for the headaches that it saves, it is worth having it turned on. If you know that your entire network is blank, so nobody's going to configure, have configured anything on a static IP address incorrectly, then set it to zero. We don't need to have it switched on, but I highly recommend having it turned on. So the next thing is there are no scopes. So let's fi uh, fill in the scope. So right click again new scope and it should talk you through setting it up so name I'm going to call it main network 
and a bit like over on the routers configuration interface where you've got the range I'm going to copy that range so if you don't know what to fill in for the subnet mask it's almost always going to be 255.255.255.0 if you have a working network with DHCP already then I would recommend checking on an existing computer so let's go over to Bob's computer and run command prompt let's make this window a little bit bigger and run ipconfig slash all so we've got subnet mask 255 255 255 let's go back over to the server and click next any IP addresses you want to exclude so if you have a printer or you know your printers are within a certain range so if you knew your printers were within 0.150 through to 0 160 you could add that and Windows Server wouldn't even attempt to give out those IP addresses for the moment and with this demonstration network I'm going to leave that that there will be no exclusions how long do you want the lease to be small networks this also won't particularly matter you could really have that set to 30 days as long as you don't have in this instance where we're doing 100 through to 200 which will give that exactly 100 IP addresses unless 100 devices came into the network over a 30 day period we're never going to run out of IP addresses it would be unusual to set it as high as 30 um, I'd probably leave it on the the suggested default of 8 here which means that uh, if one well say 99 things join your network then it'll take eight days before those allocations will drop off of the table if you've got a high volume throughput network for example a public area with open Wi-Fi then I would suggest setting the lease to possibly even just a couple of hours maybe maximum of a day sometimes especially if you have an event going on you might find that you run out of DHCP IP addresses and the last people that turn up to your event try and join your Wi-Fi and aren't given an IP address uh, in this instance or demonstration I'm just going to leave it default and click next do you want to configure the options for the DHCP scope so yes just adding DHCP with no options will give computers IP addresses but it won't tell the computers uh, for example on the router what the gateway and what the DNS servers are those are called the DHCP options and we do want to configure those so enter your default gateway that one's very easy we know that that's the router so 192.168.0.1 let's copy that setting we have to type it in it looks like yep 0.1 and then next and now DNS this is something I've not yet talked about but we do not want to use the router as the DNS server because we're going to have computers joining the domain controller we want to use the domain controller as the DNS server interestingly it's actually already filled in the domain controller's own IP address there which is fine so what will happen is all the client computers for example Bob's computer or Jane's computer will query the DNS server on this domain controller this domain controller will then send the request onto the router so we can go next on that Wins server and NetBIOS leave blank and do we want to activate this scope now it basically is enabling the Windows Server to give out DHCP IP addresses so what I'm going to do is go over to my router 
turn off DHCP. And DHCP server is now not started. And on the Windows server, I'm going to click Next and Finish. And that should, if I refresh, all right. It's enabled it, but it hasn't started the DHCP server. So where it's got IPv4 and the red down arrow, that means it's not yet enabled. So I want to right click on it and start or authorize it. Ah, OK, no, it's the server above. I need to right click on it and authorize. And now refresh. There we go, green tick. That will now be giving our IP addresses by DHCP. If we go into the leases section, there's nothing there at the moment. If I minimize that, go to Bob's computer, and let's compare the difference before and after. So right now, or before I made the change, that was what had been given out by the router. Let's keep a copy of that. Let's close that old one. And now if I do IP config forward slash release, which releases the DHCP IP address. So the computer, Bob's computer, now doesn't have any IP address. And then I do IP config forward slash renew, which will send some DHCP requests. The server should respond to it and has given it an IP address. So if I do IP config slash all, and I'll take another copy of this and we'll compare what has changed. So we've ended up with a DNS specific connection suffix, sorry, a connection specific DNS suffix, which is the name of the Active Directory domain that we've created, which is what we want, that's good. You can see my router originally was only giving a fairly short lease, so it was obtained on the 30th of December and expires on the 31st of December. The Windows Server was obtained on the 30th of December and doesn't expire for another eight days until the 7th of January. And the only other differences is the DHCP server and the DNS servers now point to my Active Directory server, which is perfect. That's exactly what I want. And we can close that and minimize Bob's computer and go back to the domain controller. So that's DHCP moved over from my router to the Windows server. We can now close that. Um, and before we do though, in scope options is where you could set other things. If you have VoIP phones, or possibly CCTV cameras which can use DHCP options to do auto configuration and other things. If you go configure options, you can set, say, an NTP server, a syslog server, or at least a log server. The other thing you might want to do at some point is make sure that an computer which joins the network is always given the same IP address. That's the reservations section. If you right click, new reservation, you'd fill in laser printer or something similar. I want to always give it 192.168.0.199. You'd fill in the MAC address of it, so 00 B4 B5, and add it to your list. When that device joins the network, the server will make sure that it gets that IP address there. It also will mean that no other device is given that IP address. And that's about it. So we can now close the DHCP section. So as part of moving DHCP over to the Active Directory server, the other thing it will do, if your machines are domain joined, which is what we will do in the next video, is in DNS, it will automatically create the names of the uh, machines that you have joined to your domain, which makes management a lot easier. With just DHCP, without the machine joined to the Active Directory domain, it won't do that. But once we've joined Bob's computer to Active Directory, that will appear. So hopefully I'll remember to show you that later.
what is worth setting in the DNS settings is something called aging and scavenging of the record so that when a machine hasn't been on your network for a while the record disappears from the DNS so if we right click on it in the DNS management so not the DHCP management go DNS manager go into forward zones and right click on your active directory name and go to properties in the set aging scavenging click on the aging button tick the option to scavenge stale resources and the defaults will probably be fine so we'll just click on OK on that and then OK on that so when dynamic entries are added after I think 14 days they will then disappear from your DNS so that's good if you have a high turnover of domain joined computers or you change their names or their IP addresses change it's quite good to have that option set so I do need to go over to Jane's computer and release and renew its IP address so that it has an IP given out by the server so at the moment oh, it's actually renewed it itself while we were doing the video while I was doing the video so DHCP server it's moved over to being the Active Directory server and DNS is moved over as well. So there we go, that was moving DHCP from your router over to the Active Directory server in preparation for joining computers onto the Active Directory domain. If this video has been useful for you, it'd be really, really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing. And have a look at the other videos in this series for other basic tasks on how to manage and set up a Windows Active Directory domain.